Good morning. Out here, uh, walking on the new trail that we built. Going down this way and things, and and uh, there's a lot of work. And we're going to be doing some more trails and things for the upcoming winter. Opening up some of the older trails. Um, right there, some of the trees and the things that we cut down. Mostly smaller stuff. Didn't have to cut any really huge trees down, but we will be when we get back into here. Um, there's some, we had to rip some stumps out in this area right here. Did those by hand. Used what's called a Pulaski. If you know what that is, uh, some people might. But um, cut the roots out and you dig the thing out and whatever else with it. Got the, these stumps out of here. More brush piles right there. We'll eventually um, chipper shred that stuff. And if it's anything's big enough that we can use as starter wood or whatever for firewood, we'll do that. Luther kicking some some leaves there, but you can see the the trail goes down this way. There's Luther, but it goes down like that and uh, curves up around. This is actually one of the old skidding trails that they did when they logged this property back in 2014, 10 years ago. Um, so, but I want to talk. Here, kind of an interesting topic. Um, feminism is strength in the absence of real men. Uh, I did a video oh, probably a couple weeks ago now, and I was walking along and I had that statement just kind of pop into my head. The Lord kind of put it in there. And the video itself was, I was kind of a little bit, not really making my point, I guess. I was rambling a little bit too much, have a tendency to do that. And uh, and so I thought, eh, I don't, I'm not going to publish the video, but I did like that statement. So I thought, well, maybe I'll just do an actual video on that statement itself, which is why I'm doing this video. Um, and again, you have to understand, you say, why are you saying this stuff? Why, why are you coming down? There's obviously a feministic problem out there and, and things. The Christian faith is a religion of self-judgment. Uh, it starts with self-judgment. You have to get to the point where you realize, um, I'm a sinner, I can't save myself, I need Jesus Christ. That's what the Christian religion is all about. Um, show you something here real quick before I show you another area. There's where the trail goes, comes curves around this way, goes back in there. I've done a lot of my videos back under these trees right here. Um, that was pretty messy when we first bought the property and I felled a lot of the trees and things in there. But then we're, um, you know, cleaned it up and things so the trees are growing better. But then there's a new trail going this way, which I'll walk on now and show you that one. But as a Christian, you have to judge yourself. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged, the Bible says. Uh, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Um, you have to judge yourself, okay? And when I did my study, which was right over that way, um, about the thing of, um, as a man, you should blame yourself, okay, uh, for the problems of your wife. You should say, hey, you know what? Uh, it's my fault. I could have done a better job. I could have done this. I could have done that. You know, and, oh, you didn't use the exact right <clears throat> way to say it and whatever else. Okay, have a little bit of grace. You know, you don't like the way... You know, if you're so perfect the way that you can preach, well, then you do it. You come out with your own videos and things. Some of these commenters and things. Well, you shouldn't have said it this way. Or you shouldn't have... Okay. Fine, whatever. Um, uh, you know, I don't even know how to answer some of these people. They just... People just pick apart everything I say, which, you know, is okay in some ways. It's fine, but... Um, you know, some of the criticism gets a little irritating sometimes, but... There's another old logging trail going down that way. You can see all these small little trees in beside the two different areas there. So I'm gonna be working on that too, cleaning this all up. And uh, again, there's a lot of trees back in here that I need to cut down that'll make good firewood. And uh, that's another thing that we have to do a lot of, but um, the issue of why are young women getting into feminism? Um, well, there's obviously a cultural uh, t 
teaching and things there. Feminism is essentially witchcraft. I did a sermon on that, audio sermon, many years ago. Probably about 2009, 2010, back when I was on Sermon Audio with the Bible Believers Fellowship. And, um, and I proved it. I mean, there are prominent feminists that say very plainly that feminism is witchcraft. Um, and why did you know women get into witchcraft? Well, because of the absence of strong men. It's just that simple. Um, oh no, there was great, you know, uh, strong men and whatever else and, and things. Uh, a strong man won't let a woman get into witchcraft. Um, strong fathers will protect their daughters. But you get a lot of these sissy men out there and the, the girls don't feel like they're protected. It's a real shame. And, um, you know, I can... For all you little sissies out there, you men, and I'm, I speak bluntly, I speak plainly, I, uh, if you think it's because I'm not loving, then get off my channel. Quite frankly, I don't have time for a bunch of girly boys. Um, again, this is judgment. Old time preachers, real true New Testament preachers, are very rough. Um, they speak, they are rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. That's what the Apostle Paul said. Um, and you know, we use great plainness of speech. You say, well, that's what rude means. It means plainness. It doesn't mean you're arrogant. Um, well, you haven't read the New Testament. And you haven't read from a lot of the old time preachers. Uh, I speak bluntly so that you understand exactly what I'm saying. So that there's no confusion there. Uh, last thing that you need is to be confused. And um, I see a lot of the sissies out there and they say, oh, you know, there's just no good women left. I'm going to be a man going my own way. I'm going to get into the MGTOW thing or whatever else. Um, I can assure you that there are young Christian ladies out there that are waiting for a godly man. Um, and, well, how do I meet them? How do I meet them? The Lord will bring you together, like he did with myself and my wife. Um, you know, you don't have to go to some church building somewhere or whatever else. The Lord can bring you and her together. Uh, but you have to trust in God and you have to get your life fixed up. And, you know, I was messing around with a bunch of different sins and the Lord was making it very plain to me. I'd, I'd pray, Lord, please give me a wife. And, and the Lord would say, get rid of the sins. Then we'll talk. You don't want to carry those sins into a marriage. You mess up your marriage. Well, yeah, but I really would like to get married. Well, then get your different issues fixed up. Brian, I did. And the Lord gave me a wife when I was 36 years old. You say, boy, that was a long time. Yeah, I messed around with sin for a long time. So again, I can judge, rightly judge, you know, because I've removed the uh, beam out of my own eye. Um, I'm a very great sinner. I really messed up a lot of things in my life. And that's why I can judge you young, little, uh, lazy, good-for-nothings, because I was a uh, lazy, good-for-nothing myself for a while. Um, and you know, get it, get it into your head, get it into your thick skull. Why I'm saying these things. I want you to have a better life. A lot of these idiots out there that, that attack me and say, Brian backloads works into salvation. And he's trying to, you know what, it, I'm trying to get you to clean up your life so that you can have a positive life so that you can enjoy yourself so that you can have a victorious life of fighting against sin. Oh, you're trying to control me. You're trying to... I can't help you. <laughs> but um, I will tell you this, and I don't have any fear of being wrong on this because I know I'm right. Uh, feminism exists because there are weak men. Men have been effeminized. And so women have to take, stand up and uh, take over. Kind of reminds me of the story in the book of Judges. Uh, chapter 4 and 5, I think it is, right in that area there of Deborah. And that uh, God used her to judge Israel. <laughs> and uh, uses a woman to judge. Why? Because the men were involved in all kinds of uh, idol worship and other things like that. They were wimpy. And she uh, she's sitting under this tree or whatever, you know, this area where she sits at, where she can judge Israel. And... Um, she says, call for Barack, not Barack Obama, <laughs> thankfully, but uh, 
you know, call for Barack. And this Barack guy shows up and she says, okay, we're gonna go out into battle. And what's he say? I'm only going if you go. <laughs> Just, uh, I won't go up and fight these guys unless you're with me. Mm. You know, proving my point. Uh, well, it was because, no, she was be the prophet or whatever. Uh, why was there a female prophet? Why was there a female judge? Uh, because the men were weak. Uh, well, I don't agree with you. Okay, you don't have to agree with me, but, you know, I'm right and you're wrong. I, I, I don't know any woman out there that enjoys being with around a sissy for a husband and whatever else. And, uh, you know, I've had uh, people meet through this channel. Um, I've had numerous people in the comments meet and then they say, oh, actually you're in my area. Oh, really? Wow, you know, and they get married. Um, there's ways that it can happen, in other words. Uh, God can make some things happen. But again, you know, another thing that a lot of the sissies do out there is they don't want to live by faith. And so they'll just go out and they'll, they'll look for excuses. Well, I can't earn a good wage. I can't earn what I feel that I'm worth. So I'm not going to have a job. Okay, um, and I just want to say this. We still could be looking at another 10 or 20 years before the catching up of the body of Christ. So you young little lazy slobs out there, young men that are slobs, um, and I'll call you what you are, uh, because I enjoyed, back when I was a lazy slob, I um, was convicted a number of times to work harder and do other things because a preacher put me in my place. So that's what I'm doing to you right now. Don't like it, leave. Um, but you young, lazy little slobs, oh, I'm just going to serve the Lord. I'll just do things for the Lord. You ready to do that for another 20 years? This generation shall not pass till all be fulfilled. Okay, the generation, well, it's, what's a biblical generation? Well, it doesn't have to be a certain set number of years for a biblical generation. The prophecy of Matthew chapter 24, the rebirth of Israel. You know, it actually could be the people that were born in 1948. What if they lived to be 100 years old? That'd be 2048. Hmm. If you take seven years minus seven years for the time of Jacob's trouble, wouldn't it be something if the catching up of the body of Christ isn't until 2041? Almost 20 years out into the future. And you're going to uh, just do whatever and play video games and things for another 20 years? Oh, and uh, another thing I want to say about this, little rant video here. Um, another thing I want to say, uh, what makes you think that you're going to be spared from war if a draft comes up? And there's already the war started over there with Israel and Iran. We're real close now. 57,000 troops, I heard, already over there in Israel. And you're going to be spared because uh, you, you know, need to be there with your parents and whatever else. Uh, my father was drafted for the Vietnam War and he didn't have to go. You know why? Because he was the sole provider for his wife and his children. And so they said, okay, uh, we'll pick somebody else because you're a husband, you're a father. That's an excuse, it's a good excuse to not go to war. I can't go. I have wife and children to take care of. But uh, I'm a single guy and, and I don't want to go to war. I think a lot of you uh, young men out there, I think it'd be good for you to go to war. Toughen you up, to be quite frank with you. Um, there's a lot of young men out there that lack character. And that's why there's feminism. The young girls, they want to see a guy coming home, a guy that's uh, been through some stuff, a man that's tough, a man that can uh, do some things and that will provide for her. Again, you know, it's another reason why a lot of these women go out into the career world because they have a husband that can't provide. <laughs> Let me see how many people I can tick off today. Um, <laughs> 
I really don't care. I'm just going to speak plainly. Um, well, yeah, but Brother Brian, I know, ideally, tree branch, uh, ideally, you're right. I understand you're right, brother, and I know why you're saying these things, and I, I get it, but times have changed. Um, times have changed, but the Bible hasn't changed. Standards of righteousness and truth haven't changed, and I am going to stand for that, even if it makes me unpopular. So, I'll conclude this video now. Feminism is strength in the absence of real men. Quote from Brian Denlinger that he got from the Lord. <laughs> uh, take it as a challenge. I know some of you won't. Some of you will write your little snarky comments and get back to playing your video games and uh, say how you're hurt and you're unsubscribing and I can't believe you would say this. But I hope I've kicked some of you hard enough some of you young men out there. Um, I hope I've kicked some of you hard enough that you think about what I'm saying and understand it comes from a true place of love where uh, it's called tough love. Where I'm going to kick you around a little bit to make you think. And you young women out there, um, you be as uh, good as you can in terms of... Um, studying to be a good wife and you pray and you say lord i want a real man i don't want some little sissy that's uh going to make it hard on me and not provide for me and and i'm going to be a the best housekeeper i can i'm going to go against this whole feminist movement i'm going to look feminine it's kind of funny you know modern feminism um we're feministic and we just won't don't want to look feminine <laughs> We're going to wear pants and cut our hair short and, and say we're just as good as men and all the other stuff. Uh, then you really shouldn't be called feminism. Um, it should be called, uh, I don't know what you would want to call it, some kind of name about trying to look like a man and be like a man. <sighs> it's pretty sickening. But uh, young ladies out there, um, do your part. You have a part to play as well. You need to learn how to do things uh, that will save the family money. Don't be a high maintenance little city chicky that uh, needs to be taken out to eat and needs to have jewelry and needs to have everything else and oh, I just, I couldn't live in a place like that or whatever. Learn to be a good woman. Learn to be a strong woman. Um, and then pray. Pray like crazy, pray as much as you can. Lord, I want a husband. I want a good man. I think I'd make a good wife for a good husband. Okay? So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.